Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that I want to hit for tonight is this instance that's going on in L.A. where you had someone defend themselves and their family in a clear instance of aggressive assault with a deadly weapon, and yet he loses his concealed carry license. He gets penalized for defending himself. And that's something that I want to address because this is something that's going to be made towards individuals who are not familiar with this because if it seems that egregious, it is, and it's not just in LA. I'm gonna highlight a few things and everything will be linked in the description box below. And please, if you are new and you find this interesting, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. We are distributing freedom twice daily on this channel, and we'd love to have you along for the ride. All right, my brothers and sisters, so as I mentioned in the introduction, we are talking about the situation in LA, in California, where an individual was assaulted at his home, walking up to his front door with his family there. He loses his uh, concealed carry license. They still don't have the criminals who did it. He gets a penalty. He defended himself. Criminals aren't arrested. This is a theme that you're going to see in gun control areas, and we're going to hit it. And remember this term, duty to retreat. Okay, we're going to come back to that in one second. But first, let me show you the first clip here of what happened, if you are not familiar, and then we're going to hit this. i got three clips for us. LA criminals came to my home, pointing guns in my chest. After successfully defending my home and my family, and my five-month-old child, California has now decided to suspend my Second Amendment. It was a quiet evening, and as I was coming home from the gym, the two lone men, masked, hopped over the wall, ran down on me with guns, and the most terrifying part was, my wife and my five-month-old baby were on the other side of that door. In an effort to protect my family, I drew my gun and returned gunfire. As a result of that night, the California government has temporarily suspended my ability to concealed carry. All right, so fair, fair disclaimer, that video was put out by the NRA. I left the Chiron in the bottom there because it's their, it's their work, and to be honest, credit where credit's due. This is a pretty well done video. However, the big thing here is what would you do in that exact same scenario if everything that you cared about was on the other side of a door and someone runs up behind you with a gun threatening to get into your environment with your most precious things on the planet on the other side of that door, how would you respond? And would you expect for the government to revoke your concealed carry license? If the entire point was to defend yourself and you did successfully and you achieved what you were trying to achieve, yet you get penalized. Where are the criminals who've been arrested for this? They aren't there. Who gets penalized? The individual who's the victim. Now we're going to start to introduce the concept called duty to retreat. If you are not familiar with the concealed carry verbiage, if you're not familiar with the nomenclature of duty to retreat, essentially in blue bastions in gun control states, duty to retreat means if someone comes into your domicile or your environment, you have to, above, well, above any and all else, get away out of your own house, jump out a window, jump out a door before you defend yourself. It is actually written law that you will face penalties if you defend yourself in your environment unless all other options to retreat have not been exhausted. If you can't get out, if there's a window, if there's a door, if there's any way out, you have to do it before you defend yourself, no matter what the circumstances are. Doesn't matter. Duty to retreat. Now, if you are new to this, again, this is what I'm, aim I'm aiming this video at. You are now, the onus of running away from your own protected area is on you, while the criminals have scot-free carte blanche to do whatever they want. Now, sure, there are laws against aggravated battery, there are laws against breaking in, but should there be laws against you defending yourself if everything that you held dear was behind a door? Keep that in mind as we go forward. I got another clip, because this is what it's about. Keep that in They'd rather leave me out there to dry and let my family become a statistic. My situation is unique because it happened at my front door, all on camera. But this happens time and time again all over the country. It doesn't get caught on camera. And people sweep it under the rug because it doesn't behoove their political agenda. The fact is, evil will always exist. But we need our ability to defend ourselves and keep our families safe from violent people. Two things there, and this is a very good point. Evil will always exist. We carry firearms. We have the Second Amendment to defeat evil in its various forms. That's the entire point here. You've got a scenario where evil is going to exist. You cannot have all the existence of leftist ideology around gun control, particularly if evil exists. Evil can't exist, therefore it has to be deleted and erased. Understand, you're crazy for seeing something happening and taking an action to defend yourself. It's on you, you shouldn't have done that. You should have become a statistic. This is the exact same environment 
by the way, that they are passing laws in Los Angeles, in San Diego, in the heart of California, that security guards cannot carry firearms because property is not worth someone's life. That was their premise. Even if they're being threatened with the penalty of loss of life or with the threat of violence, doesn't matter. It's just property. Duty to retreat. This speaks to something larger than just the hatred of guns. This speaks to you becoming a victim so that they don't have any consequences outside the government's control. And then the big irony is the government comes in and has no consequences whatsoever. Understand that this is larger than just the hatred of guns. This is about a statistic as this point was presented. Now this last piece, this last piece I wanna put in here because this is an important thing. And if you are new, please hear me on this. Here's the third clip, then we'll wrap this. Criminal is someone who doesn't follow the laws. They don't care about gun laws. They don't care about safety classes. They don't care about being qualified to be able to shoot. Criminals don't carry, they don't care about laws. They do whatever they want because they're criminals. By very definition, they're not going to follow the exact same principles that you're applying to legal gun owners about carrying a firearm. All these stipulations that you have to pay these fees to do it, which, by the way, disproportionately affects those who can't afford them. Therefore, you have rights for the richer or the more affluent versus the poor. That's great. Way to go, lefties. And then the other piece there is they don't do any of the responsible gun ownership things that we do on the Second Amendment side. They don't do any of the practice. They have a gun, therefore they have more power because the state enables them. The state has now put restrictions on the rights and liberties of others, which enhances the power of the criminal. That is the point. And I know that this is an example. There's lots of examples. But that's what I wanted to hit on on this video. And please, let me know if I landed this plane. Send this message out everywhere if you think that I did. Because this is the fight for our rights. It's about perception. And it's about relating it back to people who are not familiar with our fight every day. I hope I landed that plane like I said. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.